a paper that is uh, AC ATX UK September 2018 paper based on FA 2019 exam because the current exam is based on FA 19. So this complete paper is also available to practice. And if you if you want to just see that uh, the what resource are available on the website, so you can see that I'm just sharing the link of that. You can see that the this is the particular page of CB Question Practice ACC platform. You can directly access it, or you can use through your IDs. And there is a, a specimen exam. There are practice exam. And you can see that that specimen exam complete. You can opt it as a mock exam. Practice exam one complete paper of March, June 2019. There are four questions. Practice exam two again, December 2018. There are four questions. And the third exam. So this four exams, that means you have approximately uh, 16 questions to practice using this platform. And I guess this is enough if someone want to have a good understanding of how to use that platform, it is advisable to attempt all those available papers. Okay. So, and other than that, you can see here the ATX practice platform blank workspace. And if you, if you use this, there will be a plenty of, uh, uh, Excel and word processing response sheets will be there on which you can practice and make you perfect about how to attempt question on the Excel and word response sheet. Now let's move to the uh, question that I was discussing about that I have to discuss. So I have, I'm starting from So this is the September 2018 exam. So will I will discuss uh, the agenda is first of all, I will let you know about, know about the uh, elements on the uh, platform. Then I will try to solve few parts, uh, those uh, parts in which uh, we have to calculate few uh, text rules and in we have to write some discursive answers so that you can understand that when you are planning to attempt a question that in an exam setting how you can write in word processing document and how you can use the excel sheet available right and whether you whether to use the uh, word processing document when to use the excel sheet that you have to decide in your exam as per the requirement of the question so you can see that this is the first available page and that says that the about all the exams that uh, the exam is three hours and 15 minute time period and so and so on. So let's move to the next one. So here you can see that there are instructions, journal instructions and the instructions about the workspace. So you can see that your exam consists of a number of questions. Now, one important thing is that the manual exams and the computer based exam, there is no change of the format of the exam. The exam format is similar for those who are planning for the manual exam and for those who are planning for the CB exam. So no, nothing to worry about the exam pattern. The exam pattern is the same. Now in the exam, each question is presented as a work space. I will show it to you in a few minutes time and each work space will include introductory information about the question. There will be few exhibits. There will be a requirement work space and there will be a response option. This is important. The response option is either the word processing document, spreadsheet 
or slides. Now, in our case, in the ATX exam, we have nothing to show on slides. So, ideally, the relevant response sheet for us is word processing document or the spreadsheet, right? And in ATX exam, there are no complex formulas, nothing is there, no appendix, uh, appendix is to be prepared. So there will be no hesitation of how to use the word processing document or the spreadsheet, which is pretty simple. Now, when you use those workspaces, then uh, there are multiple other options available that I'm going to show it to you. So you can just let me just transfer it to the main screen. One thing very important when you are practicing using the CB practice platform, there will be a slight differences between the CB practice platform and the life exam. And they have show it here that this is the CB practice platform screen. But in the life exam, the screen would look like this. So there is a slight difference, slight difference, not much. So you can use that options easily. Nothing, uh, there will be no issue at all. And there will be some uh, highlighting issues that uh, in the uh, specimen or in the practice platform, the highlighted version would be like this. And in this, the life exam, when you select something, that part would be like a grayed out gray part. So there will be a bit difference and there will be a slight difference in the tool as well. So this is the beginning of this exam and you can see that this is the same which uh, we did in manual exam. Time allowed. There are three hours and 15 minutes as this is a practice exam. So the time is not marked here. This exam is divided into two section our ATX exam is divided into two sections. The number one section A comprises of 60 marks in total. So the majority marks are in section A and the section B comprises of 40 marks in total. So this, this are the, uh, there are the two sections available. Section A worth 60 marks and section B worth 40 marks. One important thing is that whenever you are planning for any ACC exam, remember that time management is very important. And those who are not able to pass the exam are struggling with the time management. So what you have to do, you have to practice under the time conditions, under the exam timings, so that you will be habitual of managing your time well. Now, if a question has been given there worth 20 marks, then you can easily calculate how much time is available and do not spend more than the allocated time. Otherwise, you're not able to complete the paper. And if you're not able to complete the paper, say suppose uh, you have attempted 80 marks paper or the 85 marks paper or 75 marks paper, there will be a very much uh, problem for you to get the passing marks. So first priority is that your time management skill should be very good and you will try to attempt each question and each part question at least you can try to attempt so that if you try then there are chances that at least out of few marks you can get one two three and that will create a decisive uh, difference between the passing marks and the failure. So section A, in section A, there are two questions and those two questions, one is worth 35 marks and the other one is 25 marks. Now you have to be very much careful when you are planning about from which section to start the exam and which question is to be attempt first, because that is very important because the starting time of your paper is very crucial. So whether you will start from section A or from section B, it entirely depends on how much 
the requirements you know if you if you know the requirements of section a questions as well and section b question as well then try to attempt the question from section b why because the section b questions are much uh, less informative as compared to section a because these questions are worth 20 marks so there will be not enough information so you can easily pinpoint you can easily identify what is the requirement of the question and what is the scenario so that things would be easy for you to get and write but as far as this 35 marks question is concerned there will be a lot of information and if you are not able to correctly relate the information with the requirement there will be no marks available so one important thing is that that you have to decide you have to practice uh, is from where to start your paper from which question to start your paper and as per my advice i i strongly recommend that do not start from first question that is worth 35 marks until and unless you have no choice you don't know each and any question you are not able to attempt any question other than section a first question other in that way there is no option available to start with section a and the first question otherwise it is always advisable where to start from the section b attempt one question at least from the section b and try to get at least 50 percent marks because the marks are quite easy in section B and mind you, the marks are quite difficult to get from section A just due to the information overload. And this is, this is the kind of thing that a student face problem ultimately in the real exam. Now, there are two questions in section A, there are two questions in section B. All the questions are compulsory. There is no choice, unfortunately. So let's begin with the exam and let's see what are the features are currently available in the CB exam. So let's start from, so this is the new window and you can see that uh, section A, section A comprises of two questions, calculations and working need only be made to the nearest pound. You have to follow these instruction. You have to work to the nearest pound. So that means correctly use the available decimals. All apportionments should be made to the nearest month. So if time apportionment is needed, use the nearest month, right? Now in the live exam, you should indicate which requirement of your response relate so that it is clear for the marker to identify and you can what you can do is to correctly put the question number and correctly put the headings show all notes working that you want the marker to see within your responses remember any notes workings made on the scratch pad on your working paper will not be marked those who are planning for the manual exams, they, they, can, they are usually uh, put some notes on the paper. Those who are planning from the CV point of view, they have to use this scratch pad. And anything that will be on the scratch pad will not be marked by the examiner. If you want something to be marked, that would be on your response sheet and correctly labeled with the working and the requirement number so that is very important because in that case if you're not correctly doing that you might be uh, losing some marks so this is the basic instruction and uh, let's move to the next page on the question page so you can see this is the first question that is available right and now let me just talk about the options available in the CB exam. What are the features? Let's discuss about that. First of all, let's discuss this navigator feature. When I click on this navigator feature, you can see I'm just moving this window on this particular page. You can easily move it here and there. 
and there are section A, question number one, question number two, question number three, question number four. So using that navigator, you can jump to any question. For example, I just want to see question number four first. I have clicked on this and you can see I am on question number four and instead of using the next button, use this navigator to jump through the questions from section to section. Now let's again move to the question number one, which is our first question. Okay. So this is the first function that is available on this CB exam. Now you can directly move on to the next question from here. When you see this is the next question, question number two, and you can come to question number one again using the previous button. So this is navigator. This is next one. This is the previous one. Now here you can see that in the ATX exam, we have to do some practice. Uh, numericals we have to solve some numericals as well so in that case we need to have some symbols and usually the symbols that is required is we have to put in your answer sheet and here you can see that following symbols are there so in ATX exam usually we need to have only the pound sterling sign and in other exams like AFM, where you have to do some uh, risk management calculation of currency risk. So you need to have multiple currency signs. So here, if you want to use in your answer screen, any symbol, just click on that symbol and put this insert. So you, this sign will be directly placed onto your response option. I can do this once I will solve any part of the question. So this is the symbol available right now there is another feature that you have to use that is the on screen calculator now students are not habitual of doing calculation on the on screen calculator but if someone is uh, working through the home that is the home based exam remote invigilation there will be no calculator available as far as my knowledge is concerned, the ACC will not allow you, you to use your calculator. If they allow, then there is no problem. You can use your calculator, but if not, then we have to use this particular calculator, whether we like it or not. So you can see that this is the normal calculator. This is used to for some calculation required plus minus multiplication, something like that. That is you to, you have to, use in the income tax calculation or other tax calculation. You can use this on screen calculator. If you want to close this, kindly just put off your uh, videos. I'm already just stop the videos kindly. So for the time being, I'm just crossing it and this is, so if anything, just want to uh, want, just do not want, just cross it there. So this will be, unavailable so this is the calculator feature now along with this you can see there is a, a feature that is called scratch pad now students are worried about that if there is a manual exam you can use your pen paper rough working papers but in the cb exams where they can use workings so for workings there is a scratch pad and you can see that on a scratch pad, there, is a, there are options, cut, copy, paste. It means that from this scratch pad, if you, if you want to working, for example, let me some, put some working here. For example, I just want to have some pension uh, contribution working. So this is the type of scratch sheet I'm using that uh, uh, I'm just noting some information from the real question, for example, uh, how much is the gross contribution? I just put it down gross contribution. Then I'm looking for the uh, relevant amount. Now, this is this is what I'm just using the working or the formula and then I'm I'll I'll be using that. This information I can 
use this information i can copy that information and i can use this to i can paste on any response option available so whatever i am using uh, the scratch pad this information is not being marked by the examiner so if you want this scratch pad information to be marked by the examiner for example there is a calculation if you want to uh, markers to check that calculation just put in the response sheet and if you have already planning something that you want to be shown in the uh, response option so you can connect with the answer then you can use this copy cut function and you can use this information copy it and transfer to the response option so this is the kind of noting down few information for example the year end is given as 31st december you might not able to uh, uh, again and again use the requirement so you can just copy the requirement here so and so on and now if you have written something on the scratch pad and if you click on this and again if you want to show this there is the information available whatever you have written in the scratch pad that will be available throughout your session you don't need to type it again and again so this is a very useful feature for those who want to have some uh, rough working and then they want to just answer on the response option now you can also do one thing in a state of using the scratch pad directly do some working on your response option but if you are doing some working on your response option and you if you want that such working do not be marked by the examiner that at the end of the session or at the end of the question just delete that working that is very important but if something is written on this scratch pad there is nothing to bother about it will not be marked so this is one of the important function that is the use of scratch pad for rough working so now now you can see that this is question number 1 and question number 1 generally is a big question in terms of information so you can see that there are two exhibits now what what are those exhibits these exhibits contains information so you can see exhibit number 1 what what is that it is an email from your manager and exhibit number 2 this is a schedule of information so that means this both contain some useful information about the question so let's just i want to see what is in the email so i've just click on the email the top view is will be different in the live exam a bit different you can see that there are two pages in it and in that there is some information about the company now if i'm reading that email and uh, i just want to uh, note it down few important information then you can see that i found one important information that both companies are uk resident company now there is a highlight function there are colors so you can use one color and you can use the information now in this way i have just highlighted the important information so i don't need to read the question again and again do it smartly because if you highlight each and every information then there is no use of this highlight function and if you if you want to use two multi two colors then uh, this is available here you can use and now if you if you if you can see that uh, uh, i if i find another information for example so i will just use the same highlight function and i can highlight further information now what what can i do is that i can also use this information to transfer it to my scratch pad so that i can plan that what i have to do so important information just use the highlight function and you can just note it down the important information now in the particular see there are requirements in the exhibits as well so this is the requirement distinguish 
between tax evasion and tax avoidance. So you can correctly identify this is one requirement and state the purpose of the GAAR, Journal Anti-Abuse Rule. So I have highlighted that there are two requirements. Now, if you have clearly highlighted, there are two requirements. So while answering, keep in mind, this is not a single requirement. You have to put time to answer the difference between tax evasion and tax avoidance, as well as the purpose of the journal anti-abuse rule. And similarly, you can see that another information is there that why this GAAR is likely to apply to this particular plan. And this is the information. So read information and answer this question, part B. Now, if I close this, no problem, I can come it on to it again. Now further information, the same feature, there are lots of information. If I found something important, now you can see that just few pieces of information, just few calculation. So if I, if I just want to highlight few information, you can see that uh, the relevant information, the selling price of machine. If it's a CGT question, the selling price of the machine, is there any cost? No, there is a chargeable gain directly given. So again, important. So I highlighted the chargeable gain and again, useful information that this particular gain is roll over. Immediately you, you just recall that what is roll over relief? What are the rules regarding roll over relief? How a gain that is deferred is chargeable. So that if in the requirement, this is a question, you can easily answer that particular question. So this is the two exhibit. If I use again, then you can see my highlighted version is still there. So this is the question one exhibit number one containing some information exhibit number two containing some information. And now let's use the requirement ultimate important for us. So this first question is a long one. So there are few requirements. Now you can see, Requirement number one, you can highlight what is the main requirement. You can highlight the marks that which requirement is having high marks, which requirement is having a low mark question. So you can see that the last part just have five marks. Pretty easy. So what you can do if you know the relevant text laws, the relevant information, you can even answer part B first because in the computer based response sheet you can easily uh, try to uh, use the particular format so you can easily get few marks from this part B and there are other information like value added tax requirement go to the question just treat what examiner is asking about value added tax the sale of the company's trade and assets another requirement the sale of the company's shares so clearly identify how many requirements are there. And remember, we have to answer the requirement correctly. We don't need to answer generic one. That if examiner is asking about uh, registration of VAT. So it doesn't mean that you can write each and everything about VAT registration. Just see the requirement, go to the question, see what is the issue. If anything is already mentioned, don't need to repeat it again because examiner is not willing to give you anything which is not being asked. So don't waste your time in writing unnecessary answers. Do not write generic answers, write specific answer, write precise answer, write the conditions, write the rules. One of the flaw for the student is they do not have understanding of the rules correctly. For example, if CGT relief is there. So if there is an incorporation relief, you must know what are the conditions for incorporation relief. If they're asking about the uh, terminal loss relief, you can 
you can be sure about that what is the definition of terminal loss relief how you can calculate terminal loss if the last year is not of 12 months well, how to deal with overlap loss how to deal with overlap profit du during the terminal loss what is the loss relief method against terminal loss relief if an examiner is giving you a situation of terminal loss then reply it with the loss relief available for a terminal loss business rather than giving them each and every option available in your syllabus so be specific be precise so that you can manage to use your time well now so these are the requirements let me just cross it for the moment now this is also possible that you can open up many tabs you can open up many tabs you can uh, use this like uh, you can jump to this you can jump to this so anything like that or you can do it you can close all once if you want to close all you can use this and you can one by one close if you don't need if you think that this is creating a problem to write the answer just close it down and move to your response option now before moving to the response option i have already used a strike through now a strike through is something that you want to clearly highlight that some information is not meaningful so you can strike it through so that unnecessary information is not bothering you but that is not meant to be something very important to use this strike through if you if you do not use then doesn't make any difference but the highlighter function is very important so that only specific information is to be considered now let's move to the this you can see there is a help text table button just click on it and there are three specific tabs workspace help text table exam instructions so these exam instructions are important and this is available at the beginning of the exam as well the same instructions you can use at the beginning of the exam okay so this is not important right now text table as in the manual exam you will be provided with your exam paper a text table and allowance sheet similar table will be available to you on your screen and you can use that information you can use that information well whether i am able to copy that information or not let's just check it out one information particularly okay let me just uh, use this uh, dividend nil rate band information and if i want to copy it here i find to uh, use the say suppose uh, i have just want to write it in my scratch pad well, whether i am able to so nothing so whether i am able to answer it on my response sheet let's see so here is the paste option available so it's not that you can copy it from there but you can stick write it from the text sheet you can see if you forget about the personal allowance you can use personal allowance if you, you need to have rates of income tax tar benefits you can use that if you want to know the taper relief just go there see how much taper relief is available for your requirement if you want to see inheritance tax right rate 40 percent is given if you want to see the cgt rules cgt rate so clearly see which information is the is in the table so don't need to memorize this information now workspace help this is a document that is that will tell you about the options available in the workspace i've already told you many so i'm just moving to the few more things all the features they have mentioned here now these are the options available in the response option they have mention that what are the features available in the word processing document what are the feature available in the excel sheet few formulas are also been there so that you can 
while during your practice session you can use this information and understand it these are the few formula luckily in our exam in the atx exam we don't need to have a complex calculation we just need to have plus minus multiplication division nothing else so let me just now the final one the most important one on this screen is the word processing document you can see this is your major response option available now th this is the now you can see here the options available reset you can cut copy paste undo redo you can make it bold for example uh, i have to put some heading here in terms of uh, say suppose incorporation relief that is being asked and i just want to put my heading so you can use bold option you can use the underlying option so that there will be a clear presentation remember that in section a the first question comprises of four professional marks very important and this is available against the proper format communication calculation required workings you can get few marks from there so in this way you can use the these uh, functions you not need it many options you can use few options available that is the you can use the table option you can prepare a table if you want to you can you can see the table hopefully we don't need to have a table requirement paragraph and sub paragraph so th this is the basic word processing document but remember that uh, the these are the features if you want to use any other feature that will be not available in the exam only those features are available which are mentioned here so now in this response sheet i will answer my theoretical answer the discursive part this word processing document is relevant for discursive part but you can also do some basic calculations here for example if examiner is has asked about the personal allowance treatment say suppose so i put a heading here the personal allowance treatment now what is the rule just write it down if a n i exceeds 100000 now what is 100000 100000 is the pound so i'll just go to the symbol click on that symbol choose pound sterling click insert now this is 100000 so and you can do is this just avoid this bold so if a and i exceed 100000 then personal allowance will be reduced by now you can put here formula that is a and i minus the excess amount sorry the a and i minus again the sign you can put the sign here you can put sign here you can use this uh, this is 100000 this and you can use multiply by multiply or divide by 2 so this is the rule that if a and i exceed 100000 then personal allowance will be reduced by this amount now if you have to put some calculation here then you can also put some calculation here as well so you can use both calculation and you can answer the discursive part in the word processing document too this is also possible that you can use a uh, word processing document for few parts and you can also use the excel uh, sheet for the other parts but i strongly recommend you that you can uh, for question number 1 always use one specific response sheet but as far as the other questions are concerned for question number 3 2 or 4 for different parts you can use 
different response sheet, but clearly label, clearly put the headings working and whatever is the reference. Now, let me just close this and just move, move to the spreadsheet. It's taking time to open. Let's see. Okay. So you can see this is the basic, basic Excel sheet. You cannot add any sheet to, right? But you can just move it here and there. You can increase or decrease the size because if you want to increase the size, if you want to move it, so you can do that. If you, if you want to move it, the sheet, you can also do that. Now the Excel sheet is purely applicable for the major calculations. So if any part of the question asks you to calculate the income tax liability, so what you have to do just to put heading here, income tax liability, make it bold so that there is bit clarity. Just use this to just show it completely. Now you can use the format here that we have uh, non saving income. Put the numbers here. I'm just taking the rough figures. There is, uh, for example, there is uh, dividend income. This is uh, what 50,000 is the dividend income. And there is, uh, say, suppose um, this is the enough. So we have to use the total income. Now you can use the Excel formulas here. You can use the Excel formula. You can also use the calculator. You can also use the formula choice is yours. So if I used, if I, if I want to use the formula, one of the way is just to put this is equal to select this cell, put plus here, select the next cell, put enter press enter and you can see that total income is 85,000. So examiner can see that 85,000. The, this shows B five plus B six and the total is that. Now I have to show the complete format. So less the personal allowance. So now personal allowance is to be deducted. So put the minus sign 12,500 personal allowance. After personal allowance, the answer is taxable income. So you can see the format. I'm using the same format, but uh, instead of a manual working, I'm just doing it on the Excel sheet. Now I have to use the answer. So is equal to just select the total income and uh, from this, right? So you can also use the sum function, open that, click on this, drag it down and just close the bracket, it will give you a taxable income 72,500. Now after that, we know that there is a income tax computation. Fair working is that very legible working easily format is you can also use it here so that there will be a good understanding of the format. You can see that. Now in this, if there are decimals, so you can go there on this, click on custom. There are options available that you don't want decimal. If you want two decimal, how much decibel you want, you have to show your answer in percentage. Okay. So you can use this as well. Now income tax computation. We know that we have to apply tax rates on non-saving income first, then we have to apply dividend income first. So accordingly, you can use your non-saving income computation first. For example, this is non-saving income. I have to put the 35,000 and uh, from that 35,000, I have to deduct first of all, 35,000 minus the personal allowance. So this is the figure and I have to show it here that I have to apply the first 20%.
so what i can do Sim simply i can calculate from 35000 it's uh, around 22500 so i just put 22500 multiply by the rate if i know the rate otherwise just go to the table and this is the rate now this is the income tax liability against non saving income an examiner can check this that this is the working 22500 from there and multiply by the basic tax rate now i can i know that the taxable income is uh, what is more than the 37500 band available so now i can complete this particular working and this is what the use of excel and there are different functions copy paste bold underline so you can use all these function but if relevant otherwise there is no need to go for any function there is undo redo button as well formatting but not much needed in case of uh, the atx exam now just let close this i just open it again my information is saved here my spreadsheet information is also there and if i have something in my scratch pad is still still there now if i have written something in a scratch pad can i able able to transfer it to the response sheet so i copied this information and if i want to suppose uh, so this is the information but you can see that the formatting is not uh, the relevant formatting so you can just uh, correct this a bit formatting here you have to correct the format here this will put some time wastage hopefully it might not be the same as in the life exam so in this way whatever you have planned whatever but whatever you have written on your scratch pad can also be transferred here and in this way you can also write something under the heading of this something under the heading of this so you can plan your answer on a scratch pad and then transfer that part from a scratch pad to the response sheet meantime if you have any question in your mind just put in the chat box so that at the end of the session we will try to have some question answer session and that will be using that functionality now i am going to no from question sheet okay i will answer mohammad altaf i will answer this at the end of the day and uh, okay i will answer all these at the end of the uh, session i hope it's going well let's have a quick feedback because i am now going to attempt few parts i i'll show to you, show it to you that uh, if in any exam question if you have to use word processing uh, how to write how to identify the requirement what to write and how to write okay let's move to so meantime let me just uh, delete that part that is just not relevant here okay this particular uh, session is uh, uh, also being recorded and the recording will be available on uh, my youtube channel i will share this recording on my youtube channel as well and uh, you can also uh, watch lectures on atx on my youtube channel uh, exactly i'm not uh, sure about that which uh, variant is in your country you can check with the acca okay 
so let's move to the question number four the easiest one that is section b i already told you that in the real exam it is always advisable to go for the question number three or four four is usually the question that comes from income tax portion three is usually the question that comes from corporation now think about whether you are be uh, able to answer income tax portion very well then go for question number four if you have enough knowledge about corporation tax then go for question number three what about question number one or two question number one or two have multiple issues that might contain some corporation tax issues that might contain some income tax issues it is a usual practice that in question number one examiner put some income tax vat ist cgt combined together three to four tax areas are usually being three to four areas are usually being asked in question number one so if you follow me question number three or question number four again repeating so you can see that this is the question number four and i'll try to solve a few part for which i have to uh, read the entire question i have to identify the important information and i'll see the part so first of all just move to the requirement you can see that requirements are clear in question number four first requirement in respect of the proposed gift of the warehouse on first october what do you have to do now clearly identify what you have to do so a first part that is just two marks so i'll just use this so let me just uh, use the highlighter and what i have to do i have identified the verb that is explain i have to explain a brief explanation is, is required because why because the marks are not 10 marks are only 2 so don't need to write uh, hardly you have to write few lines and you can easily get 2 out of 2 and this is pertaining to the gift of a warehouse recall what is in your mind about cgt there are cgt reliefs a rule available one is er incorporation a rollover entrepreneur relief incorporation relief and other holdover or gift relief but this is specific to the gift relief why capital gain tax relief will be available but requirement you have to see the question as well do not write a generic answer only specific to the scenario now you can see if i go to the part b part b says that explain just see the marks there are lots of marks eight marks so that means enough time i have to spend how much at least 12 to 14 minutes minutes i can spend on this question now you can see there is a calculation is required too so you have to do some calculation as well you can use the calculation as well now amount of after tax proceed what do you have to find out the after tax proceed which will be available from the sale of asset there is a sale of asset and the sale proceed minus the tax that is the cgt and there is another requirement that you have to show tax consequences and you have to show it for a company another requirement and you have to show it to a shareholder of about what of the gift of the motorcycle so there is a gift element now you can see i have split down split it down the requirement first of all i have to explain i have to do some calculation as well so this is not a hundred percent calculated information so don't need to use the excel i will i will choose word processing because the explanation with calculation is there i will use the word processing for question number a part one 
right now calculation about after tax proceed so first of all explanation then after tax proceed calculation then another requirement that tax consequences of sale of equipment for the company and for the individual shareholders now if you read through the examiner reports it is very useful go to the sec website try to download last two or three attempts examiner report just read thoroughly about what examiner likes what examiner do not like because who who is ultimately will provide you the exam marks that is the examiner team or examiner so if you if you want to know that what mistakes usually student commits the best way is to go to the examiner report just check identify the important points that the examiner report is saying that do not repeat that point in this way the chances will be high that if you work out the problems of others you will be able to get some good marks if you ask from the examiner team that why student fail in this paper they identify two issues issue number 1 lack of knowledge about tax rules now it is obvious which paper is that this is about you have to replicate you have to you have to show the knowledge of tax rules you have to tell the examiner if the examiner is asking about the uh, holdover relief so you have to tell the condition about the holdover relief if you are not able to explain that when holdover relief is available then you are not able to get marks and then if you know the conditions but don't know how to calculate then the theoretical marks will be available but the calculation marks will not be available you might commit a mistake in the calculation but still your theoretical knowledge about atx rules is very important now the atx exam contains the whole syllabus of tx exam and many of the issues of tx exam that is the basic information about the income tax computation about the cgt computation or the few few parts that is pension or employment income or the personal allowances there are lots of basic information available in the paper but student might lack some basic information that is they are not able to calculate class 1 employee or employer and i see correctly if this is the case go to your knowledge area go to your notes study tax the tutor notes which is which is uh, with you and try to learn the rules and the second thing that the examiner report says that that why student fail is the lack of proper time management and if you want to be good at the time management try to do practice that what i am doing right now if you practice question with the required exam deadline conditions of the time then you can able to improve your time management like without any practice of how to identify the question requirement if you if you practice few exam type question few parts you can easily able to spot what is the requirement and then do not miss that requirement that will boost your performance in the exam try to do that before the paper date now you can see that i have highlighted the information now let's move to the scenario and connect with i am trying to explain a part 1 and i am trying to explain part b because this session is not mean to practice a uh, few uh, complete exam paper i will share some uh, my uh, practice session with you on my youtube channel the videos the recorded videos so you can you can use that youtube video link i will also share here at the end of the session so uh, meantime in the, in two or three days i'll be putting some more practice question on the platform and but that will be on the recorded form now you can see if i move to this scenario and try to get the information about the relevant requirement so let's let's uh, just study the whole question this is question number 4 which topic the question is dealing now Kill and Damia are both resident and domiciled in UK. This is important information. So let's highlight that 
both individual are uk resident and uk domicile now you you should know that if someone is uh, domicile but not resident if someone is resident but not domicile then the examiner might ask about the overseas aspect the residence rule the domicile rule in march 2020 the examiner has asked in question number 1 part a the tax residence rule so examiner can ask you anything the basic one the the atx specific issues and this information is important yes this is again an important information that is both are higher rate tax payer now in this way you can conclude that if someone is a higher rate tax payer what it means it means the basic rate tax band is not available so if cgt is to be applied it will be either 20% or it will be either 28% and if there is an entrepreneur relief available in that case only there will be a 10% cgt now both make disposal to fully use their annual exempt amount each year so they use annual exempt amount fully now specifically akil is a director and 55% shareholder in spydera limited a uk resident company again this is an important information because if someone is an employee and controlling the company then there are some specific requirement too if someone is an employee and controlling the company that would affect the tax rules and what he is doing he is giving a warehouse building as a gift so there is an element of gift to a daughter if they ask about ist this is a potentially exempt transfer if they ask about cgt there would be a gift relief you can see how i am just noting down the important information not each information each sentence each everything is not important i am just noting down the important information now the warehouse from where he has purchased that warehouse the cost very important if you want to calculate gain the cost is important 62000 the warehouse has always been wholly used rent free by spider limited so the 100% business use 100% business use is there the market value of the warehouse is 195000 sometimes if you put a gift then market value is relevant again important information who is damia she will use the warehouse in the sole trader business she is using for it business there is a condition that where you are using the asset gifted intends to retain out and use the warehouse until she sell the business in 5 years time this is an important condition 5 years time that might affect some tax rules when the warehouse is anticipated to increase in value now who is spider limited spider limited prepare accounts to 30th june is owned by akil and basir that is two shareholders now it is a case of uh, if i'm not wrong it's a case of look likes to me is a case of close company examiner never told you that some company is a close company because you have to identify that a company is a close company and you have to put that the restriction on close company and the rules regarding close company basir is not connected to akil and is neither a director important information basir is not director he is not an employee so this information is useful as you can see that in the requirement the tax implication for both the company and basir for the gift of the motorcycle so exactly what i have highlighted here this is relevant for the last part of the question now the next information disposal of equipment because we have to just tell the required answer so this is important for the last part so spider limited sold an item of equipment for a proceed of 20000 this is sale proceed now you can do one thing more if you if you want to 
if you don't want to refer it to again you can what you can do you can just go there okay let me just close down the excess things what you can do you do you can transfer the information here on the scratch pad as well if you want to transfer some information from the question the relevant information it will take you two to three minutes you can easily write it down that uh, what is the selling price it's twenty thousand what is the cost so you can easily transfer this information to the response sheet now let's again put this scenario the equipment cost is sixty five thousand and the equipment has been sold at twenty thousand so there is a loss sixty five thousand minus twenty thousand there is a forty five thousand loss the tax written down value why it has been given on the main pool was nil why it has been given think about it rollover relief was claimed that means when you sell that asset and buy that item previously there was a rollover relief on the purchase of the equipment and there is a deferral amount of 38000 will that amount is chargeable now so there is a topic called a uh, rollover of a depreciating asset if you know the rule you can easily get the marks spider limited will use the after tax proceed from the sale of the item to purchase a motorcycle which it will give to basir that means that is an item that is given as a amount to the shareholder this is not a some kind of reinvestment because if you sell a depreciating asset and reinvest in a qualifying asset then the gain that is frozen will be rollover and that new cost will become the base cost now this is what the necessary information about what i have to solve that i have just highlighted this part now now you have to decide in your exam that which response sheet you want to use now clearly in the highlighted requirements there are not lots much lots of calculation is needed and the only the part is not 100 percent calculation so ideally i have to write the a1 in word processing and i have to write b completely in word processing if i have to do some calculation i will calculate on the word processing document so let's just put this uh, question let me just copy it from here copy let's see whether i'm able to use transfer it to the word processing document so you can see that the function is not available although you can use but there is some particular issue in that otherwise you can easily copy it here so if it's working in the exam you can check so i'm checking but it's not working here but if i use the instead of the keys instead of the shortcuts if are you if you are using shortcuts then it's not working if you're using the tab it's working so for the ease what you have to do is to just put this here so that now i will write against this and after the answer i will just erase the requirement from here explain why capital gain tax relief will be available for so why is available now i have to put here is some point why warehouse is gift relief is available against warehouse if you know the condition you can write one here and you can write the condition that gift relief is available when gift relief is available when it is available when condition number one you can put condition number one is here and the rule says that the 
warehouse is a business asset and it's being used by akil throughout throughout the period of the typing is will be good if your typing is good then you can easily type you can practice the typing skip throughout the period of ownership and it's a and it's a personal trading company in which he is an employee too and the doni is uk resident so you have just put the condition if you are able to write the relevant answer the condition of the gift relief then there is two marks available for that now after this just erase it from here put a delete button and this is your response and just put the heading here the gift relief it's very important that a heading is there so that examiner can really see clearly see that which part is this and for what answer is that okay so let's just move to the last part in which there is few some calculation is there so what was the requirement just move it again you have to explain with calculation the amount of after tax proceed which will available from the sale of asset and tax consequences so first of all what i have to do is i have to show the after tax proceed i have to show the after tax proceed so i have split this requirement as this is the remaining part the part uh, b and here is uh, put the heading here that after tax proceed i have to explain first and then i have to do some calculation about after tax proceed now use the required information that there is a sale of asset there is a tax return down value of nil there is a capital loss so if if you connect this with the rule it says that the disposal of machine will give rise to either a balancing allowance or a balancing charge in this case twdv is twdv is nil so if twdv is nil and you deduct sale proceed so this results in a this results in a what balancing charge and what is the tax treatment of the balancing charge this balancing charge will increase the tax taxable trading profit of the company this is one point now we have sell an asset at a price of 20000 it cost was 65000 so there is a loss but if you know the rule if you know the rule the rule says that if there is an asset which is used for capital allowance purpose there will be no tax capital loss so you can write there is no capital loss because 
this is this is an asset which is available for capital allowances so why there is no loss because the loss has been adjusted through the capital allowance process in terms of balancing allowance in terms of balancing charge in terms of, of the written down value so there is no capital loss you have put the reason now you can also write as this is a depreciating asset so disposal results in the deferred gain to be chargeable when it is to be chargeable against the sale of the asset and there will be a 38000 of gain and this will increase the taxable trading profit of the company so there are two two numbers here that will increase my tax liability one number is there is a balancing charge so i can also write the amount of balancing charge i missed that uh, balancing charge of now i have to put the currency symbol here this is the currency symbol this is the pound sterling insert that pound sterling and 20000 balancing charge so there is a 20000 balancing charge there is a 38000 of chargeable gain put symbol here as well 38000 now if the profit is an increase so you have to show that how much additional tax you have to pay and what is the proceed so the additional tax due to above events are now i am just putting some calculation here 20000 of balancing charge you can put the currency sign 20000 of balancing charge plus 38000 of gain multiply by 19% and you can show the answer here as either here you can show the answer here or you can write answer here put the currency symbol pound sterling insert just calculate 58000 into 19% using the above calculator 58000 into 19% so let me just show you how to use the calculator this is 58000 58000 multiply by 0 0.19 very difficult to use the on screen calculators so this is 11020 so i'm just putting there 11020 in this way i don't need the excel information and i have used the calculator plus i have used the calculation in my main working and the question says that after tax so the after tax proceed is again put the symbol here that is pound sterling insert that pound sterling and you can put it here the sale proceed was 20000 deduct the 11020 tax and 20000 minus 11020 so 20000 minus 11020 so in this way the answer is 8980 so you can write 8980 so you can see how effectively i have used the word processing document to answer the first part of b 
so this is what my, my agenda was to just to show it to uh, show it to you that how we can use all these features how we can use the uh, word processing document excel for excel i will upload a recorded uh, uh, practice question on uh, uh, my youtube channel so you can subsequently watch this as well so this is all i i just about to show it to you for today and uh, i hope i have used all the features here in the required this is a feature flag for review uh, this is available for mentioning that you have not attempted any question and later on from the navigator you can check that what questions are being flagged so you can attempt it as per the available time so this is what the purpose of uh, today's session as far as uh, some exam tips are concerned again i will share some exam tips some key questions some key topics on the whatsapp channel that is that you were using uh, in order to connect with us today so now uh, if you have some questions or problems you can ask what question is in your mind so i will be answering that question so let's see how many questions are there from the beginning let's see or you can see from the end uh one of the question is saying that this is crazy how do they expect us to click on all these things to pass exam well uh this is uh, now a fact that the cb exam is there so while through practice you can use all these feature that requires practice if you attempt few questions then uh, you will be working like me so don't bother about that rather try to practice we don't have much in uh, the exam left only few exam left so uh, students are doing it from the fundamental levels so this is now a uh, fact so you have to accept that fact so while doing practice you can easily uh, get used to all the information so one of the student is asking that after this training i get the certificate no this is not meant to be a certification it is for the student who are attempting the paper coming soon so what do we type in to get your youtube channel what do we type in to get your youtube channel if you want to get my youtube channel i just put the link here i have several times uh, show it to or put the link on my youtube channel on the whatsapp group i will again share the link so through that link you can join my youtube channel you can join the atx videos you can easily access so let me just put it here so this is what this is the link this is the link of my youtube channel this is for everyone now anyone else any other question okay so can we copy paste everything from question sheet you can copy paste from the scratch pad you can copy paste from the exams required requirement of the question to the response sheet but for for the question you can try do you have to use formulas no you have to use just basic excel formulas plus minus also can we use our personal calculator instead of the pc calculator uh, that depends if you are uh, attempting it from your home then you have to check with acca as far as my information knowledge is concerned they will not allow you to use personal calculator from the home based exam but if you are planning to attempt it from the center then yes personal calculators are allowed anything else can we do the calculation on microsoft word in instead of excel yes that is that is possible so okay students whatever question you okay another question is that 
sir calculators are allowed in in their instruction i think so sir how to pick up all those easily from question how can we do this easily any tips look just just watch the the practice session again that how i am just identifying the requirement how i am reading the question if you just follow me in the exam you can easily identify the correct requirement right and follow my few practice session that i'm going to upload it soon on youtube channel so they are not allowing no scrap paper at all if you are uh, uh, giving exam from a center then the paper will be uh, available if you are doing it from the home then paper is not available so if the question is asking for calculation and explanation we need to ensure that we are using the word in excel thank you yes if the question is asking for calculation only then best thing is excel if the question is asking for word uh, for explanation and calculation do it as i did on the word processing document no need to use excel because it's very difficult to type on excel the theoretical explanation obviously that session was uh, free of charge one for all the students and the recording will be available on my youtube channel so i will upload the recording tonight so you can share you can watch you can share you can use with other student as well sir can i write all things in excel without going to word yes it's possible you can use excel as well simply you can use excel but not been advised by my side you can use i'll advise to use words processing document any further question it's may be time consuming to go both simultaneously yes it's advisable to use one if you manage to use one then either use word processing or excel if you are doing it on word processing then use calculator and if you are doing calculation on excel use the formulas excel will give you some edge of quick calculation while cal through calculator the calculation would be tough unless you are use usable enough habitual enough of doing of using online calculator anything else okay if you have any other question if you want to know anything about atx you can uh, either post it to my uh, post it to my whatsapp uh, group or you can ask me directly on my youtube channel you can get youtube videos on a specific topic tomorrow i will give you some key questions some key uh, topics in this september 2020 exam question is that but suppose you want to do both calculation and explanation on microsoft word is that okay so what i did in the last part what i did in the last part i did the same thing i was just using the microsoft word and meantime i was just showing the calculation i have question for this what is the question if you have the question then where is the question okay if all the question have been answered completing the paper will be a chance to pass it's very important mohammad altaf that you can complete your paper at least attempt i am from rwanda this the preparation of acc exam can i write what i wrote on my scrap on my answer paper as well yes obviously if you are using the scratch pad simply copy that information to your answer paper and then uh, use the correct format and you can easily show it to on the 
मेन आंसर पेपर ओके सो दैट वॉज दू डे सेशन आई होप यू हैव सम इंफॉर्मेशन यू गॉट सम इंफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम दिस सेशन दैट विल इम्प्रूव द वे यू विल पास दिस इंफॉर्मेशन और यू हैव लर्न समथिंग फ्रॉम दिस सेशन अबाउट द फंक्शनैलिटी अबाउट द आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ क्वेश्चन रिक्वायरमेंट और हाउ टू डील विद द इंफॉर्मेशन एंड सम अदर टिप्स still you can connect with us via the social media platform till the day of your exam so that uh, you will be able to pass your paper uh, in this particular time sir anything to buy heart anything to buy heart what is that i didn't get that what is that buy heart अल्ताफ क्लेरिफाई योर क्वेश्चन सो ओके गाइस थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग दिस सेशन hope you have a nice time with me thanks a lot so this is all for today we'll continue tomorrow no this is the this is the only uh, uh for today uh just one cut and copy knowledge from books you can you can ask me personally because i'm not getting that question so you can like ethics no i didn't get your question so you can ask me directly on my whatsapp uh, that what you want to specifically know okay so i'm signing it out for today